This is a session on concrete placement for the KYTC structural inspection class. So what is the objective of concrete placement? What we're defining it as is it's to deposit and consolidate concrete mix to form a dense and impervious mass of uniform texture. More or less we want a good solid concrete mass. We want it uniform, vibrated, and placed in a method that will give us the required result as designed. In this session we will be covering the classes of concrete, the placement methods for concrete, proper consolidation, weather considerations to take into account, and finally curing and finishing the concrete. So to start with the classes of concrete, as you can see in the image shown, KYTC has multiple different classes of concrete. We'll start with just class A, as you can see here at the laser. Class A concrete, as stated in our bridge components video, is the concrete that is used in the substructure. So our footers, our pier columns, our pier caps, indents, abutments, and so on. Anything in the substructure will be placed and built out of Class A concrete. As you can see with Class A concrete, it has a 3500 uh, PSI compression strength requirement and a 2 to 5 inch slump requirement. And air is 6 plus or minus 2. We'll just kind of work our way on down the list. Class A mod is a, a mix that is designed to be placed under water. It is what is used in our drilled shafts. Double A mix is what's used in the superstructure. So our bridge decks, our bridge railing, uh, some diaphragms, anything that is considered superstructure will be double A concrete. And note, it has a 4,000 PSI with same slump 2 to 12 and has the note 12 outside it. Class B concrete is just kind of a general concrete. It's got a lower PSI at 2,500. It's a lot of what we use in retaining walls and just mass concrete. Uh, D and D mod is used in precast uh, structures. M1 and M2, I like to call those our maintenance concrete. We use those on bridge maintenance jobs for joint replacements and joint elimination. Note that is a higher strength with a higher slump. That is a fast setting mix that can get traffic opened up in a pretty quick amount of time. Class P concrete doesn't really do much with bridges, but P is for pavement, and that is our pavement mixes. If you want to know more about concrete placement, refer back to the uh, 500 sections of the spec book. Now, I know, said something about note 7 and note 12. If you go to the next page of the spec book, it pops up these notes. And if you can see, note 7 and note 12 are similar. They're just adapted a little bit for each class, but with the addition of a high range water reducer, we can go up to a seven inch slump. So this is used in an instance if you've got a high congestion of steel or a small area that vibration is minimal, we can go up to a uh, higher slump mix to get better uniformity in the mix. So for concrete, you've got to have all the right ingredients. You've got to have aggregates, the fine and coarse aggregates, uh, your cement, your flash, everything must come from the list of approved materials and make sure we're meeting all restrictions for the aggregates. One thing, is the source approved? Everything must be from an approved source and on the list of approved materials. So moving on to the placement methods. So depending on what you're going to be doing on a bridge job, you could be using a pump truck, say for bridge decks, a pump truck with a slick line, a crane bucket if you're working on a pier and you can't reach it from the indent or the abutment, so they use a crane bucket. Uh, if you could be pouring directly from the truck, a conveyor system, or a trimmy pipe if you're doing pier columns and having to get concrete all the way to the base of the column. Some things to check before you start placing concrete. Are the forms tight and secure? Go up and check them. Make sure they got the proper grade and alignment. This is where you get out your 25 foot tape measure and you check. Is it four foot wide? Is it six foot deep? Is my steel spacing six inches on centers or whatever else. Check it, make sure it's clean of trash. You don't want any cans in there, coffee cups, leaves, mud, dirt. It needs to be clean. Uh, 
Does there need to be water? Is there water standing? Do we need to remove it? Do we need to wet the steel down, wet the forms down? Uh, just kind of do a check over the area that's going to have concrete poured before they start placing the concrete just to make sure everything is right. During placement, we want to avoid segregation, which is what, for by whatever method is placement is used. Do not drop concrete in excess of five feet. Where you're getting the placement, get whatever the discharge point is down close to the point of placement. That way you don't get segregation. Segregation is as you're placing concrete, the rocks fall to the bottom and a paste comes to the top. That is not giving us that uniform mass that we're looking for. We want a uniform mass from bottom to top with a good mix of coarse aggregate, fine aggregate, and the cementitious paste. For proper consolidation, we want to place concrete in small lifts. Nothing more than, say, a 12-inch lift. And make sure you vibrate correctly between lifts. So once you place lift 1 and you place lift 2 on top of it, you're going to vibrate all of lift 2 and then down into lift 1 to bring those two lifts together to make that uniform mass. If this isn't done when you pull the forms off, you'll see that cold joint in there in the honeycomb area where those two lifts were done. We want to make sure you want, don't want to over vibrate. Over vibrating will do the same thing as dropping concrete in excess of five feet. It's going to cause the rocks and the aggregate to go to the bottom and the paste to come to the top. And do not allow the contractor to move concrete with the vibrator. We've seen it too often where they're pouring out of the truck, out of the chutes, and it gets to the last corner of that footer but can't reach the last three feet. So they just pour it all in a big pile, hit it with the vibrator, and push it over. That is over vibration. If this is the case, they either get another chute or get workers down there with shovels and start moving the mix. We want to insert and withdraw the vibrator quickly. Five seconds is perfect. Anywhere three to five, you don't want to just go in and out, in and out. You're not going to get enough vibration. And if you keep it in longer than five seconds, you're going to get over vibration. For low slump concrete, just look at it. Make sure you're getting a good finish. Watch for bug holes, any slumping of the wall, uh, depressed areas around reinforcement. Watch it coming out right behind the slip form machine to make sure we're getting the consolidation that is needed. For weather consideration, check the forecast. Weather plays a tremendous role in attaining good quality concrete. If it's going to rain, we need to take that in precaution. If it's going to be hot, we need to know we got to cool the mix. If it's cold, we got to heat the mix and have blankets in place. You got to know what to do just in case for whatever the weather is going to do. 75 degrees with high humidity is the perfect weather for concrete. You're getting the moisture that's needed and just enough heat to help with that uh, cure. Do not pour concrete in any freezing weather without precautions. It can be done. The contractor needs to have a cold weather protection plan. They need to know how the forms are going to be warmed prior to placement and how they're going to stay warm after placement. Check your form temperature. It may need to be preheated or cooled like we said. Uh, this could take with water or a heater down in there. Check the three to five day outlook. This concrete's going to be in cure. We, want, we don't want it going into freezing the day after. If our concrete freezes, it's not going to give us the strength that we want or give us the durability that we're looking for. Are we going to need blankets? Are we going to need ice, hot water? These are things that need to be taken into account based on what the weather is going to be. For curing and finishing, avoid using water as a finishing aid. There's already water in the concrete. We've all seen it where they take the mason's brush and they bless the concrete. We don't want that. If you're adding water as drops to the top, you're going to be able to finish that and look it good, but you're still going to trap water underneath the paste. And what happens as it cures, the first time you walk on it or somebody drives on it, it delaminates off and you've got a terrible looking finish. If you are going to add water to concrete surface, it needs to be form of a mist. You don't want it droplets. You don't want it shooting on it. You want a mist going over it to give you that finish and to help uh, get the concrete in the way that you need it to finish it and give it to the room. Everything needs to be moist but not wet. Your forms need to be moist, especially wood forms. Your reinforcing steel needs to be moist. Concrete loves water. So if you're going to do this, make sure it's got the water to pull in to give you an aid in your finishing. When finishing, make sure you're using the proper curing method for the type of construction. 
make sure if it's a deck, you've got the right finishing. If it's a wall or footer, make sure you're getting it moist and keeping it warm or keeping it cool. All we want to do is we want to give the concrete the ideal environment that it needs to have to cure, to give us a proper strength and longevity that is desired for the design life of the structure. Finally, for curing and finishing, all concrete surfaces ha must have ordinary surface finish. This is as per 60103.18 of our spec book. No matter what, everything needs an ordinary surface finish. No questions asked. That is, as they pull the forms off, we need to rub it, we need to patch all holes, we need to grind any form marks and patch it with a concrete that's uniform in color with that was put down. And that is the end of concrete placement. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been beneficial and helped you in what you needed to know.